Natalie Sidesurf here of Sidesurf Cake Studio, and I'm gonna show you how to make a brain cake. You may ask yourself, why would anyone want a brain cake? But they're actually pretty popular, because I have made a brain cake for a brain surgeon, I have made brain cakes for people who brought them to Halloween parties, that's always fun. Uh, and this particular cake is meant to be a little bit more gory. So I'm actually going to add like a red edible goo to the brain. And that's gonna make it just slightly more creepy. <laughs> Before we get started, I wanted to mention Patreon. So I have Patreon where I post Patreon exclusive content. And if you guys are interested in supporting our channel, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash sidesurfcakes. So let's get started. This brain cake flavor is a fitting red velvet with cream cheese frosting. So I started by stacking three eight inch round layers of cake. The first thing that I did to carve the brain shape was I looked at the cake from the top and cut down the sides of the cake. And then I used my serrated knife to round out any sharp corners. So at this point, I'm really only worried about the correct shape from that top view first, and then I started to carve the side view. To do that, I just rounded out the top and bottom edges. The only other sculpting of the cake that I needed to do was that I noticed that the sides of the brain have these deeper creases, so I carved those, and then also there's a large crease that goes down the center of the brain and that defines the left and right sides. Once the cake is carved, I cover the entire thing in a thin layer of cream cheese frosting. This is called a crumb coat. So I have a question for you guys. Have you ever been told that humans only use 10% of our brains? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> because of this cake, I found out that that's actually not true. We actually use most of our brains. I have been bamboozled. Now that the cake is covered in frosting, I place it in the fridge to chill, and I start working on the modeling chocolate. Here I'm rolling out modeling chocolate into these really long coils. If you prefer to use fondant, that's totally okay. Modeling chocolate or fondant will work for this. Then you take the cake out of the fridge, and now it's time to start decorating. This is really fun because there isn't really any rhyme or reason to placing these coils onto the cake. I placed chocolate on at about every inch or so, I started to curve the coil in a different direction. So it's just all wound up and swirly, it's really fun. It's almost like a simple puzzle I had to make sure that all the coils fit together, but it's not super difficult to do, so it was almost therapeutic. Every once in a while, I would push down on that modeling chocolate. It would flatten it out a little bit, which looked more like a brain, but also it helped to make sure that the chocolate is secure on the cake. So you're gonna do this until the entire cake is covered in coils. You know why I love making cakes? It's because I get to work on one project nonstop, start to finish. So I noticed a long time ago that when I would switch from one project to the next, that it really slowed me down. And uh, I used to say that I'm, I'm not a multitasker, but as it turns out, multitasking isn't really a, a thing that we can do. It literally means that we're just switching from one task to the next repeatedly back and forth, and that actually slows us down. Apparently it can make your error rate go up 50%, causing us to take twice as long to get things done. That's something to think about next time you're working on multiple projects. Maybe just focus on one, get it done, work on the next, get it done. I guess everybody's different though. Dave, Side surf. He is my husband, and he is also the other half of Side Surf Cake Studio. So he does all the baking. 
And I wanted to mention him because he is the one who made this glorious red goo. So what he did is he reduced frozen strawberries with some water and sugar, and then he ran that sauce through a mesh strainer and that took out all the seeds. And then he slightly thickened the sauce with a cornstarch slurry. Then he handed it off to me once it was at room temperature. I then brushed the sauce onto the cake with a pastry brush. And let me tell you, this stuff smelled absolutely delicious. <laughs> I love a good strawberry sauce. You can really see all the sauce kind of filling into those cracks. It looks so cool. And it's so simple. If you guys want us to make a video showing how to make this edible goo, let me know in the comments because we can get Dave uh, working on that. <laughs>